All right, so this online lesson, we're going to talk about this concept of density, okay? So density, uh, normally people think, oh, it's how dumb you are, or like, you'd say, oh, my friend's really dense, okay? Uh, we're, of course, never going to call anyone dense or make fun of anyone, but density, okay, typically refers to um, s something that's surprisingly small that could be heavy, or something that's surprisingly big that's really light, okay? So density is actually a great way for us to compare uh, a couple of different objects, okay? So when we talk about density, usually we refer to uh, real-life objects, but uh, let's talk about geometric shapes. Of course, we all know about geometric shapes. Uh, let's talk about a rectangle, okay? So a rectangle, usually it's, this is a two-dimensional object, okay? And rectangles are measured length times width. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. But you can find the density of two-dimensional objects because they only have area. You need an object that has volume, meaning it has three dimensions. Now, of course, I can make a rectangle a three-dimensional object. Okay. So it looks something like this. Okay. And now that I've made it three-dimensional, it actually can hold something in there, right? Like if I wanted to, I could put some water in this tank, couldn't I? Like if I could fill that up there. Again, that can hold water. Now, I just put a little bit of water in there, but it could go all the way up to the top, but I can only do that if it's three-dimensional, okay? So this particular box has a length, has a width, but now it has this dimension of depth or height or whichever uh, dimension you have. So density is the measure of 3D objects, okay, which we call volume, okay, so when it's two-dimensional we have area, which is, again, whatever units we have, so those are squares, okay, so square feet is what we'll say. And then for volume, for three-dimensional objects, we say cubic, or CU, cubic feet, cubic inches, cubic uh, yards, whatever it happens to be. So area is a square foot, or again, two dimensions. Volume talks about uh, the cube, or three dimensions, so cubic feet, or again, three different dimensions, okay? So when we're talking about density, we need to know the volume of particular objects, okay? So when we know the volume, okay, let me go ahead and erase everything that we have on here. So we need to have volume. We have to know how to find the volume, okay? So we already talked about a rectangle, okay? So for a rectangle, to find the volume, volume equals length times width times height or depth, okay? But it's all three of those multiplied together, okay? Another common uh, volume you'll need to find is for a cylinder, okay? So a can of some kind or some type of tube, okay? So the volume of a cylinder is pi, because again we're dealing with circles, r squared, times the height, okay? So that is how you find the volume of a cylinder. So the radius squared, height, so those are the three dimensions there, okay? Uh, something else that you might see is for a cone, okay? So a cone, just like a cylinder, is actually pi r squared h, but you actually say one-third. So, because a cone is only a third of a cylinder. So one-third times pi r squared h, okay? And then, very rare, but you could see it, uh, if I have a, not a circle, but a sphere, right? A three-dimensional circle, okay? And the volume for a sphere is four pi r cubed over three. Okay, or four-thirds pi r cubed, okay? So these are the common uh, objects that you will have to find the volume of. It's either going to be a prism or a rectangle, more than likely. Cylinder would be second most likely. Cones and spheres, not so much, but just wanted to make sure we had the volume formulas there so that you guys could reference them. Okay, so let's say, for example, I had these two cans, right? Now, they're two cans of soda. Now, obviously, they're going to weigh the same. What if I told you, though, I filled one can with air, like just air, but I filled another can with sand, right? Even though they have the same volume, okay, so because remember this is a cylinder, okay, so let me do this in a different color here. So these are cylinders, right? So like that's the circle, that's the height, there it is, okay? Even though they have the same exact volume, 
Again, let's say this can over here was filled with air, and this can over here was filled with sand. Okay, The weights of the cans would be different, right? So even though they have the same volume or capacity to hold something, because they're holding something else, it makes them more dense. So the sand, obviously, is going to make things more dense because it's heavier, right? But even though it takes up the same amount of space as the air, sand is more dense because it's heavier, okay? So that's kind of what we're going for. So with density, okay, write this down. This is important. We're going to compare the mass of an object, okay, meaning how heavy it is, divided by the volume of an object, meaning how much could that object hold. So density equals Mass divided by volume, or as I like to think about DMV, okay, Department of Motor Vehicles, for those who have a license or getting one, density, mass, volume, so DMV, okay? So that is what we're going to be working with here. So let's talk about density. Uh, we've already talked about it, but here's kind of a picture example. This gold bar is quite small, but has a mass of one kilogram, so it contains more matter than a similar sized piece of wood, right? So if I had a piece of wood that same size, gold is actually going to be more dense because even though that piece of wood and the gold had the same volume, gold is going to be heavier. It has more mass, so that makes it more dense, okay? And now here's an interesting part that we're going to investigate in class. It says the density of water is one kilogram per liter, so anything that floats has a lower density, and anything that sinks has anything that sinks has more density, right? So typically we sink in water, right? And so that's what we're more dense than the water is. But particular objects float, and so therefore it has less density. Okay? And we're going to experiment that with class tomorrow. Okay? But here's what we're getting at. Let's try this problem here as an example, and then I'll let you do the rest on your own. All right, a cylinder has a radius of 7 centimeters and a height of 6 centimeters, and the density is 7 grams per centimeters cubed. What is the mass of the cylinder? And again, it says give grams rounded to the nearest hundred, okay, if the answer is not exact. Okay, so remember, we just talked about it. Density, let's write down the formula. Density equals... Mass divided by volume, DMV. Okay? So in this problem, uh, let's talk about the density. Okay? It gives it to me, right? Density of 7 grams per cubic centimeter or centimeters cubed. Okay? So we already have density. Uh, in the problem, we also talk about volume, right? So because it gives us a radius and a height. So that's the information we need to find the volume. And once we know both of those, we can find what we actually want, which is the mass, right? What is the mass? So that's what we're trying to find. So first, let's find volume, okay? So for a cylinder, remember I wrote that down in the previous slide, that it is pi r squared h. That is how we find the volume, okay? So in this problem, it says that the radius is 7. Okay, well, we can write that down. So volume equals pi 7 squared, and the height was 6. Okay, so 7 squared is 49. And 49 times 6, let's type that in. 49 times 6 gives me 294. And then 294 times pi, which I hope you guys remember is 3.14, which we'll use here. Okay, so 294 times 3.14, uh, it gives me 923.16. And for volume, remember, it's always cubed, but what's the, it's centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's the volume of my cylinder. That's the potential amount of space that can fit inside that particular cylinder. So now that we have the volume, now let's, do, now let's plug in the density. Okay, so in this problem, density is 7 grams per 1 centimeter cubed, okay, which equals the mass, which we don't know, and the volume we just found, 923.16 centimeters cubed. Okay, so in this problem, again, I know it's 7 grams per centimeters cubed, and we really don't have to write the 1 okay, down here, so we can just get rid of that. So, uh, to find the mass, the thing that we need, 
Okay, we uh, use this process called cross multiplication. Okay, so that means I multiply this together and this together. So one times the mass will equal the mass, and then seven times nine hundred twenty-three point sixteen. Let's plug that in. Nine hundred twenty-three point one six times seven gives me six thousand four hundred sixty-two. Point one two, but as the answer says, round to the nearest hundred, which means I would say six thousand five hundred grams is the mass. Okay, so you because the mass is obviously a weight, so it wouldn't be centimeters of length; it would be uh, grams. So that is how we find uh, the missing part there. So they gave us density, and you can find mass. Or they might give you mass and volume, find density. Or they'll give you density and mass, find the volume. So they'll give you at least two of them, and you have to find the missing piece. So we'll do an experiment of what density actually means in class, but I hope this video gave you an introduction on what to do and how to use uh, volume as well as density.